Hi everyone, it's Ryan from Avatar Aquatics and today's video is going to be all about phytoplankton. I'm going to start by talking about some of the species available and what they're used for, and I'm going to move into how to culture them at home, and then lastly, I'm going to be telling you some of the common problems that you can run into while you're culturing them that can result in a crash. So without further delay, let's jump right into it. Now primary producers like phytoplankton are super important in an ecosystem because they're able to take energy from the sun and to trap it in a way that other organisms can use. So whether you're using the phytoplankton to feed your corals or your clams or your fish, somehow we're actually turning light energy, which I'm actually holding one with my hand because this gives better lighting, but you take this light energy and you can convert it in a, into a, a way that your fish can use and to grow up on. Now, I personally like to use phytoplankton to raise my Amato shrimps, and I find that very early on, even on the second day of hatching, I can already find algae on, in the guts of my shrimp. But don't take my word for it. Have a look at it for yourself. That was pretty cool, right? Now, in addition to being a very, very good source of food for the animals that we're trying to raise, they have another very important ecological role, and that's in removing a lot of excess nutrients and more importantly, carbon dioxide and creating usable energy and oxygen in a series of chemical reactions. You might have heard of it as photosynthesis and indeed, Phytoplankton creates so much excess energy in, photo in photosynthesizing that after a week, we're able to go from a brand new culture to a fully mature culture that we can then duplicate, propagate, split, whatever you want to call it. Now, there are two very important species that are widely available and used in aquaculture. The first one is Nanochloropsis. It's the smaller of the two, it grows a little bit faster, and it's widely adaptable to very, very different ranges of salinities. So from full strength seawater at 35, 36 parts per thousand and 1.026 specific gravity, all the way down to almost freshwater conditions, you can really acclimate nanochloropsis. And so it's very, very versatile. Now, the downside is nanochloropsis is non-modal. They cannot move about in the water column, so they really rely on your air pump to be able to circulate the nutrients and the light. And if you let it settle, they're going to get smothered out really, really quickly. Tetracelmus, on the other hand, can move around the water. They have flagella that can allow them to move around in search of light and nutrients. So although air pumps are still needed to grow a very dense culture, you can really put the nano or the tetracelmus on a windowsill in a cup and just have it grow for quite some time before you need to change and need to change your culture water. Now, tetracelmus also have a little bit of a different nutritional profile. They're bigger and they have more fatty acids. Now, for me personally, I've been using tetracelmus, but Either one would be a good choice if you're looking into breeding a mono shrimp. Now, just one more thing before we start talking about culturing. There are two types of products on the market that I feel like are worth mentioning. The first one is dead preserved phytoplankton. Now, this is used particularly for feeding, and it's not supposed to be used to culture and to propagate phytoplankton. The only problem I have with it is if you add too much, you might end up fouling up your water. Now, the second product is a mixture of live phytoplankton, all these sorts of different species. Now, this is intended, uh, once again, for feeding and not for culturing because when there's multiple species, there's competition. And when there's competition, there are winners and losers, and in the end, you might end up with one or two dominant species. Of course, they're still alive, they can still work, and uh, the choice really is up to you. I do have some Amazon associate links down below uh, where I listed out some of the products that I have personally tried or that I know to be well and good. Now, over here we have everything that we need to grow our phytoplankton or to split our cultures except for the air pump, which is not shown. 
from the left to the right, we have the existing culture of phytoplankton. And just to show you guys how green this is from behind, this is a very mature culture. I have another culture that you guys see here. It's much lighter in shit in color, but that's because it's been in the refrigerator and the cells are a little less lively, a little bit more dormant. So in order to get all the darker parts of this culture in the water column, all I gotta do is make sure the cap is on, invert a couple times, and we'll see that this culture is as bright or as dark as the one on the left. I have a pipette, which we will be using in just a moment for the algae fertilizer. I have airline tubing, as well as the tip, which I've drilled a hole in. Now this is very, very important. You drill this one hole, but I also drill two smaller holes so that the air can escape and there's not pressure building up in the water bottle as the airline is running. We have a clean water bottle here, which I will actually talk a little bit more on later. And we have hydroalgal fertilizer. This is basically F2 Gillard's F2 formula, which includes some vitamins inside. And if you follow the link down below, I actually have uh, this product here and it comes in as a kit. I have alcohol. You can also substitute bleach in. just make sure you wash really well. And the alcohol's purpose is to sterilize this bottle. But I say sterilize, I don't mean, it's actually disinfect. Because when you disinfect things, you reduce the amount of bacteria. And I don't expect the alcohol to really kill everything in this bottle. It's not designed to do that, and it shouldn't. We don't need our bottle to be 100% disinfected. We just need it to be clean enough that our algae will be fine. I have a refractometer. This refractometer is calibrated and uh, ready to go, just so I can tell what uh, the salinity is in this next bottle here. And lastly, I have a bottle of freshly mixed salt water that is clean and at 24 parts per thousand salinity or 1.018 specific gravity. So let's get started. We're going to go first by moving the cap and dumping in some of the alcohol. So I've got a little bit in here. We're gonna shut off the cap here. We're just going to mix really well. So I'm gonna let this sit for a few minutes and then I'm going to dump the excess alcohol out. And then I'm going to put it upside down and let it dry on itself. I'm not going to blow air or wash it out. I'm just going to let it dry. It might take a few minutes to a few hours so what I've done now is I have an already dried or sterilized bottle for you. Disinfected. I keep saying sterilized. It's disinfected. What I'm going to do, the next step is to take my existing culture and we're going to pour it into this bottle here. So here we go. I'm going to keep pouring until there is about half of the culture inside and I'm going to stop. Okay, so now that I've got half of the existing bottle in here, and it's the top half because the bottom sometimes have these little, uh, little things that settle on the bottom. We don't want that. And then the next part is I'm going to take my water and put it in here. 
going to fill it up, not all the way, but just enough until this bottle starts to narrow out. Because if you fill it all the way, the bubbles from the airline are going to affect and to spill out in the, in the end. So, now that this is ready, I'm going to show you again with the flashlight what the difference between the two bottles are. So, we have number one, this is the mature culture. We can barely see through it, right? This is the non-mature culture and we can very easily see. So, once again, I'm going to put this in the back a little bit more to show you what this looks like. So, from the non-mature one, we can see very well. From the mature one, we can barely see through. And it's super easy, the next step. What I'm going to do is take this clean pipette, and I'll remove this. Take the clean pipette and the algae uh, fertilizer. I'm gonna shake it pretty well. I'm going to open up this. I'm gonna move this back. I'm going to take just a little bit. We're going to use seven drops, okay? So, let's go. Let's count together. One, two, let me pull it up to the thing. Three, four, five, six, seven. You can add a little bit more, nine drops, just because, and then the most important thing is if you have extra and you have this, do not put this back in. You've contaminated the liquid inside, so do not put this back in. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm actually going to put this in here because now we have another one that we can fill up with water, right? So take this, I'm going to put the rest in. It doesn't matter now how much is in here. And now we are able to run our airline through. Now, this airline was from the old thing and see how gross this is, right? It's got all this algae, so we're gonna have to clean this out. Something that I wanted you guys to see is just how dirty this bottle can be after culturing, even for just a week. We've got a lot of phytoplankton stuck on the sides. So if this seems to be the case, what you can do is just use a new bottle or you can soak this overnight in bleach and water. So you would really just fill it up to about this bottom room with some bleach, fill the rest up with water, cap it, and just make sure it's well mixed and soak it up overnight. And uh, what's going to happen is you'll see all this turn white. You can scrub it a little bit or you could just start using it. It doesn't affect anything once it's dead. All right, so this is my setup for growing the phytoplankton. In the back, I have a Nikru LED just put over here, and it's going to be on 18 hours every day on a timer. If you go below uh, 18 or 16 is the minimum you can have, but if you go below that, your phytoplankton will start to settle and it will start to die. So keep it on at about 16 to 18 every day on a timer and over here I've got another batch. Uh, I actually have some shrimp in here but you guys probably won't be able to see them because they're very very small. Now as you can see the difference between these two this is the one that we just put in and this one has been running for quite some time. As you can see this one is much more of a yellow shade compared to this green one here and it's because there's not enough nutrients anymore. So when you see that this phytoplankton culture or your phytoplankton cultures have started to turn the shade of yellow, add more nutrients and you should be fine in a couple of days. Now, I have a, because it's winter, I have a heater in here and a bubbler that is keeping 
the water circulating so that we have good heat dispersion through and through. Another thing that you might realize is that your culture suddenly becomes clear overnight. That's because your cells went dormant and you need more light or nutrients. If it's clear overnight, you need more light and nutrients. You can leave it running for another few days and you'll be fine. Now, if it's clear but also, but, but sorry, if it's opaque, then that means that your culture has crashed, there's a bacterial bloom, and you really need to restart your culture. So I hope that this has helped you and that this video has been 